Warning, this podcast may include discussion of violence, sexual content, or other sensitive issues. It will almost certainly include spoilers. Hello and welcome to the Between the Lines podcast. My name is Janine. I'm a library clerk at the Winkler branch of South Central Regional Library. And I'm Jess. I'm the branch administrator of the Winkler Library. This is a podcast where we discuss books. The things we love, the things we hate, the things that drove us crazy. So with that, here is Book for the Week. All right, welcome. Today we have a special guest with us. Uh, Kathy is the SCRL director, so she is with us today to discuss The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. So a summary of the book, Lyra is rushing to the cold far north where witch clans and armored bears rule, north where the gobblers take the children they steal, including her friend Roger, north where her fearsome uncle Asriel is trying to build a bridge to a parallel world. Can one small girl make a difference in such great and terrible endeavors? This is Lyra, a savage, a schemer, a liar, and as fierce and true a champion as Roger or Azrael could want. But what Lyra doesn't know is that to help one of them will be to betray the other. So this is the first book in the His Dark Material series. Book two is The Subtle Knife and book three is The Amber Spyglass. The book was originally published as Northern Lights, and The Golden Compass is the North American title. The trilogy came third in the 2003 BBC's Big Read, a national poll of viewers' favorite books after The Lord of the Rings and Pride and Prejudice. A little bit of author info, Philip Pullman was knighted in 2019 in the New Year's Honours for Services to Literature. And a quote from the author that we thought was interesting, the book is second only to the wheel, as the best piece of technology human beings have ever invented. A book symbolizes the whole intellectual history of mankind. It's the greatest weapon ever devised in the war against stupidity. Beware of anyone who tries to make books harder to get at. That leads quite nicely into why we chose the book. The author is quite big on freedom to read and everybody's choice in choosing what they do or do not want to read. So we thought this would make a good book for this week. Yes, this week is Freedom to Read Week in Canada, which is like Banned Books Week in the United States. Mm -hmm. And this is a book that has been challenged and I think banned as well. So we thought this would be a good choice. So thoughts on the cover of the book? Well, I often pick books by the cover, but this one I wouldn't have because it looks very juvenile. But I heard so much about Philip Pullman that I thought I should probably try this. I was not disappointed, but truly the cover is deceptive because young people probably would not want to read this book until they were a little more mature. That's the thing. I didn't double check whether it was junior fiction or YA when I started reading it. And there's a point where I'm going, wait, this is junior? (laughs) This seems a tad advanced for junior. But the cover, for some reason, reminds me of Polar Express. I don't know why. (laughs) Interesting. It's, yeah, like it's got a bear and a young girl on riding the bear looks very like a lovely kids book it looks Mm -hmm. christmasy in a way it kind of does yeah yeah Yeah. i know but you were kathy you were looking online with me the other day and there were some alternate covers that looked much more appropriate yeah Mm -hmm. Yeah. for what it is especially the content definitely gears towards imagination and Mm open-mindedness um if you took it literally as a younger person younger reader you might have the wit scared out of you a little bit. So. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, let's see. Like, some of the themes and concepts are a little bit advanced. Like, it's alternate realities and multiple dimensions. Mm-hmm. It's Einstein, Rose, and Bridges, which, if a kid's interested in that, cool. Mm-hmm. But not necessarily... Theoretical physics isn't necessarily, you know, junior fiction level. No. 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 And it, there were times that I had a bit of a hard time following some of that, because that's not familiar content to me alternate realities and Mm -hmm. science fiction-y kind of, I don't know. It's not your cup of tea. The thing, like, I like reading fantasy, but the thing that bothers me about fantasy is that they make up words, (laughs) and I don't know what they mean, and then I get confused. (laughs) Well, and, you know, it was enough of a, like you say, the alternate reality, but then it's still, when you hear about the Egyptians or the bear Yorick, they're groups that reflect the indigenous Mm -hmm. reality, Mm -hmm. so... Yeah, it's, it's going from, you know, way out there to 
grassroots on the ground this is really happening mm -hmm. you know so well that's the thing that use real life situations events and to appoint people and then just turn them on their head a little bit mm -hmm. yeah and present them in a way that i mean this way but kids can understand yeah it's more approachable yeah. mm -hmm. so what do we think of the story itself or the book versus the tv show well i've never seen the tv show so i have no idea i love the book i would love to meet a girl like Lyra, but I'm pretty sure she would be a handful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's yeah. so <laughs> She'd probably on, be on constant suspension. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> she's one of those where it's like really fun to read about, but oh my word, you feel bad for her parents because <laughs> you'd be in the principal's office every three seconds with mm -hmm. that one. But I mean, that is one of the things I like about Lyra though. Like she grew up at Jordan College, mm -hmm. but she's not like their pet. They're like, oh, Lyra can get away with anything, or Lyra's the favorite. Mm -hmm. No, they're, I mean, half the lines in the show are, Lyra, mm -hmm, as she, you know, runs through the hall or does something terrible mm -hmm. or, yeah. you know, throws rocks at somebody. It's yeah. not the Harry Potter syndrome where it's like, oh, you, you've done nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. right. Five points to Gryffindor. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's a bit more, this kid is a handful and we know it. Yeah, yeah. And she was raised by a group of middle-aged men mm -hmm. who yeah. really let her run wild. Yeah. Well, they you probably know. didn't really know what to do with a little girl. No. Yeah, no. So. No. But that's also she, reflected in her education, too. Like, yeah. she can talk about, you know, particle theory and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but has no real concept of some of the, the more basic maths and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In the book, I liked, like, they talked more about, like, some of the troubles she got into and, like, they did something with one of the Egyptians' boats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they tried to sink the boat Yeah, they were convinced that there was a plug somewhere. <laughs> and so I didn't see that as much in the TV show that, like, they didn't have some of those more, what I thought were a little more funny or amusing They kind things. of combined them a bit in a the little. intro because the whole um, her and Roger getting drunk on some of their wine collection yes and going into the like <laughs> and going into the crypt, crypt part yeah yeah they combined that into one <clears throat> scene and kind of made that the intro to this character which yeah. to be fair how much can, time can you spend on her well, throwing rocks and mm -hmm. having fights with various <laughs> village children mm -hmm. what i do like about the story is their demons mm -hmm. um you know especially when they're young the demons keep changing mm -hmm. yeah because your personality hasn't been set yeah you know and and of course as you get farther into story that all comes to the fore but um, yeah, uh, you know, and the demons flicking back and forth between a mouse and a hawk and a, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever yeah. the need, whatever she needed, they yeah. would be. Does it ever say, I don't know if I just missed this or if it actually doesn't say how a demon's final form is decided. Does it say that somewhere? Is that later in the book? Later in the book and in the show, there's the scene where the Egyptians, Egyptians, not Egyptians, have like the ceremony for mm -hmm. Tony. Yes. When his demon is chosen. But they don't really go into the specifics of it. No, and that was the thing yeah. that I was mm -hmm. kind of wondering about. Like, there's some, like, there was one guy and his was a snake. And it was very clear why it was a snake. Because mm -hmm. he was, like, a smarmy, mm -hmm. creepy guy. So that made sense to me. But some of them I was sort of, like... Some of them were interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, Mrs. Coulter. Mrs. Coulter, yeah. Yeah. That's Her monkey. He was yeah. that, he's a mean monkey. That monkey is creepy. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> and so is she. Yeah. Yeah. She is. Yeah. Yeah. She's definitely not my favorite character. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. She is not. The other thing I could never quite figure out is what time period we're in. Like, is this supposed to be present time or is this past time? Or um, is it just an indeterminate time of my own making? Okay, I've watched season one and two of the show before. Mm -hmm. I read the books, like, when I was in high school. But it's alternate reality, so if you go across to a different reality, it's current time. So I'm okay. assuming this is current time, but just in a different reality. Okay. That would be my assumption. Okay. Yeah, because when I was watching the show, there was some stuff that was, like, super modern, and they had, like, smartphones and whatever. But, like, Mrs. Coulter, her house and her the way she dresses looks more old-fashioned. Mm -hmm. And so then I didn't know, and I was just, am I supposed to just... And, and not watching the movie, the show, my impression is it would be early... Like, 1930s, 40s? Yeah, turn, okay. yeah. yeah, turn of the century, where... Technology is coming to, you know, become more mainstream, but people are still stuck back doing the old. Because at the part beginning of the book, they don't talk about telephones or anything. Mm -hmm. So you just assume they're there, but they're not being used. Yeah. 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 Um, like there's the airships and the zeppelins mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. Which, which brings you back to the 30s. Very yeah. 1930s, mm -hmm. yeah. Right. So. Mm -hmm. But, and I mean, too, partially the, the explorer societies and that kind of thing is 
30s, 40s, where that sort of started to taper off a little bit mm -hmm. and become less commonplace. Whereas in the book, the Explorer Society is still very much a big thing. Yeah. I do kind of want a demon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and what would you hope yours would be? I don't know. I have an awful feeling it would be like a duck or something. I'm just following <laughs> around quacking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I did like oh, it was in the book yeah there's one story of the old sailor whose demon was a dolphin yeah. and he could oh, never yes. he could never leave the, leave the ship yeah. because yeah, you could only sorry you're so stuck here now mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so hopefully not a dolphin mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we should probably clarify what a demon is demon is basically an animal that follows you around and is part of you so that was the other thing that I wasn't quite sure about. Is it supposed to act as sort of a conscience or is it just a companion, a pet? Um, Definitely not a pet. It's no, because they, and they talk. Mm -hmm. So I, like, what is their purpose? I see it as kind of, it's a part of you that's just been taken out and given animal form. Okay. And not necessarily conscience because if you look at Pan, He's not really giving her the greatest advice sometimes. <laughs> like, he's true. not right. He's not giving no. her the, the moral high ground or anything like that. He's sometimes causing just as much trouble as she is. But he does try to advise her sometimes. Yeah. So, so it's more like the voice in your head. Okay. You know, sometimes the voice in your head's not right. Mm -hmm. And then if you'd made the voice in your hand an animal. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's well, and then sort for, of how I see it. You know, we got to know Lyra and Pan the most, but most of the demons, especially the children, were their comfort. Mm -hmm. You know, the minute the demon was too far away from them, they would be, both would be totally distressed. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, obviously there's that comfort thing, whether as an adult, when their demon became, you know, um, permanent, the demon form, then they were just always there. Yeah. So mm -hmm. then maybe it, they were just your right hand. Right. Yeah, just yeah. handy. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, too. Like, it happened in the show. I'm not entirely sure if it happened in the book or not. Um, but Mrs. Coulter's demon attacked Pan. Yeah, and that happened in the book, And too. Lyra couldn't do anything to stop it because Pan was mobilized. So what happens to your demon affects you. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that definite connection there. But, like, they're just normal. Mm -hmm. It just was like never it's... really explained mm -hmm. in the book. Like, you were just supposed to know what it was. It's one of those things about fantasy that frustrates me. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, I'm just supposed well, to know. We're halfway through a book that is a three-book series. <laughs> I know. Mm -hmm. So all things in due time. I but, know, but now I'm afraid I'm going to have to read the other two books again. <laughs> <laughs> we need yeah, to we stop, stop doing series. books from series. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, too, is with the demons, they are always the, not always, most of the time they are the opposite gender. So Pan is a male. Uh -huh. Where's Lyra's girl? Oh, never okay. know. Yeah, I didn't so notice it's, that either. So it tends to be opposite. And then there was one case with one of the kitchen guys. He was one of the rare ones that had a demon that was also male. Okay. But normally it's opposite. Now that you mention that, that does sound familiar. Mm -hmm. So I wonder so, if that's where it rounds out the character? See, that's the thing where I'm wondering <laughs> if it's also sort of the giving a different gender's perspective mm -hmm. and kind of going, hey, maybe, you know, a woman wouldn't appreciate that, or hey, mm -hmm. maybe... Mm -hmm. It actually yeah. brings in an open mind, mm -hmm. if you're open-minded to accept yeah. that. Yeah. Exactly, so... And what about Yorick? Did everybody Yorick. love Yorick? I like Yorick. I like yes. Yorick. I couldn't remember the name for the longest time because I thought, Yorick, because I was listening to the story, mm -hmm. and I thought, oh, Macbeth, or Shakespeare, Yorick. Yes. Yeah. Oh. yes. Then Yorick. I could remember it. <laughs> Uh, yeah. I didn't make that connection between Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm -hmm. No, I liked him. Mm -hmm. He is grumpy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you, I was going to say, you can identify with that. <laughs> yeah, no. kind of. But you know, he was, that was my first thing. Oh, indigenous, because they'd given him some, you know, spirits and they took mm -hmm. away his armor and then he was tied to them and tied to the land and he couldn't move and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's and the thing. This is one of those books where I feel like everybody should do a novel study on it because there's so much themes and subtext and mm -hmm. stuff. Where there it's really just, is. Yeah. And also, like, a lot of, not comparisons, but, like, with the Catholic Church, it seems mm -hmm. like he's <laughs> got a, mm -hmm. what's the word I'm looking for? A commentary kind of on the Catholic yes. Church mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that yeah, going on. Yeah, because the Catholic Church was the one that wanted to... Um, the demons were a problem for them. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. <coughs> mm -hmm. Like, the Magisterium is pretty much the Catholic Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, they have the robes and the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. 
And if you look at most of history, like the residential schools, Catholic Church. Yeah. Like Spanish Inquisition, Catholic, Catholic Church. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's Templar. Catholic Church. <laughs> yeah. Yep. They, yep. they like sticking their fingers in everywhere mm-hmm. and not generally for the best. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting commentary. And it's one of those things where you, you watch it 15 times, you read it 15 times, you're going to get something different mm-hmm. every time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I'm sure, like, I, this is my first time reading it, so I'm sure I only, like, got a quarter <laughs> of what I could have actually gotten out of it. Yeah, I, I agree. You almost have to try listening to it the next time, because yeah. it is very good. Yeah, mm-hmm. but this is my second time listening to it, and I was like, oh, now, oh, yeah, okay, that makes sense now. Yeah. Because I wasn't trying to figure out who was who. Mm-hmm. Mm, yes. That's yeah. the thing. I feel like it's one of those where you have to go back and do it again, mm-hmm. because there's going to be so much subtext that you completely missed the first time around because you had no idea. Yeah. Like the yeah. gobblers. Mm-hmm. The gobblers this time, I'm like, oh, gobblers. Makes mm-hmm. perfect sense. It's the general... Oblation board. Oblation board, yeah. Mm-hmm. G-O-B. G-O-B. Yeah. Gobblers. Mm-hmm. I, I makes got that one. Makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, got it now a second time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and but then there's, there's Lord Asriel. Uh, what a jerk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lyra has got the worst parents in the she world. Does. She does. Yeah. yeah. She didn't win the lottery there. No, no, <laughs> no, no. I'm pretty sure she lost big time on no. that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he's the kind of guy that you just think, see coming and go, oh, I'll just cross the street a little early. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, nasty man. It's nasty man. If it was the Wild West, he would have been the one, it, you know, you want to see shot down in the gunfight, right? <laughs> yep, pretty much that. And Mrs. Coulter. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah. No, yep. Lord Asriel and Mrs. Coulter, for anybody listening, um, it's Lyra's parents. She didn't know they were her parents. Turns out they are, and they're basically horrible people. I despise Lord Asriel yeah. with every fiber of my being. <laughs> He's just one of those, which is really annoying because I really like the actor and he did a great job in X Men. But now I'm like, I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess he doesn't redeem himself in the end. Oh, I guess oh. you can't. <laughs> I guess you're That's not going to tell later. me. That's for later. Yeah, <laughs> I can't yeah. tell you. Okay. Put it this way: you're going to very much join the hating Lord Asriel Club. I okay. can guarantee it. Okay. Mm-hmm. So. But then you get the other characters in the book, like John. You know, John far and, mm-hmm. and yeah they're like everybody's there set up along the way to help Lyra right yeah. mm-hmm. you know and they're just good generals down to earth people yeah yeah. I yeah. like the Egyptians mm-hmm. very Egyptians much. are cool the one thing I didn't like is the depiction of oh what's her name it was Serafina Pecola the witch I no, her name. Like. Yeah, <laughs> no, <laughs> really just really name. rolls off the tongue eh <laughs> uh, no one of the Egyptians uh, Billy's mother Tony's oh, mother Ma, uh, Ma something yeah, her. In the book, she was described as, like, a formidable woman who you just did not mess with. Like, mm-hmm. you just don't. Mm-hmm. That didn't come across in the show. Oh, Ma Costa. Ma, Ma Costa, Costa right. right. Like, in the show, she was crying for her kid and, like, very... Oh. She didn't get mad and, like, in a she, real Egyptian woman. Like, yeah, she yeah. didn't get mad. She didn't get... Scrappy. She wasn't scrappy. She wasn't yeah. scrappy. Mm-hmm. No, it was and, very much the, you felt sorry for her not, like okay it won't mess with you mm-hmm. yeah because in the book lyra had all these like interactions with her before mm-hmm. and she then she ended up her boat. <laughs> on the, on her boat and she was like kind of afraid of mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. and then she turned out to be her nursemaid when she was a baby mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then they developed this relationship and i really liked that yeah. Yeah. how they kind of came around to that yeah. from what That's it had been and and yeah, you didn't see that in the TV show at all. No, there wasn't really that. It was like Lyra being annoyed that she wouldn't do more yeah. to mm-hmm. help. And yeah, they did just didn't really have that relationship. It was kind of hinted at, but there wasn't mm-hmm. really anything to mm-hmm. build on. And yet on this was her. the woman who saved Lyra's life. Exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it was yeah. kind of not one of my favorites. But I mean, other than that, it was pretty accurate, like book to TV show. They added a fair amount. Like mm-hmm. in the first half of the book, the Magisterium is mentioned. But nobody really shows up. In the first half of the TV show, the Magisterium is there. They've got scenes. Like, they don't meet Lyra, but there's enough to actually give some context as to who the Magisterium are. Mm-hmm. And the snake guy shows up. Okay. Yeah. And the book follows Lyra throughout. Mm-hmm. And the show, there's all this other stuff going on right. outside of that. Yeah. Which I guess you have to have in a TV show. Mm-hmm. But I was like... That's not in the book. That's not in the book. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's not in the book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but not in a bad way. No, I mean, yes and no. <laughs> I'm always a book is always better kind yeah, of person. True. Yeah, I'm, I'm true. true to the. Yeah, did you read the? Did you read the book when you yeah. like this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. Like, yes, there was a fair amount of stuff added, 
but it was still fairly accurate. Yeah. The Magisterium still aren't great. <laughs> the characters that they add do show up in the book. They've just yeah. kind of given them a bit more backstory. The and main plot points. The main plot are the points same. are there, yeah. and like to the point where like the conversation in the study uh, between the librarian and the professor, no, the librarian and the master, were word for word. Yeah. Like they've been fairly true to the book. It's just a case of they've kind of fleshed out some of the backgrounds of some of these characters so yeah. far, so far. So, but yeah. And if you thought that monkey was creepy in the book. It's even more creepy on the show. Oh, oh yes. Okay. That thing is scary and... You mm. need to watch the show. Okay. We have it. Okay. You should watch it. Okay. I will do that. <laughs> make, it may, it'll be on my mission <laughs> before the next thing. There we go. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I mean, in terms of the show, too, they did a good job of casting Lyra. Like, yeah. for so many of the, <laughs> like, adaptions of junior fiction YA where they're casting somebody fairly young, they tend to go with the cutesy, everybody will like her. Mm-hmm. This kid is one of those where it's like, She'd kick you if she met you. <laughs> and yes. that comes across, like, her character it comes across perfectly. Yes, she like, is. It, they didn't feisty. tone Lyra mm-hmm. down at all. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's well casted. Like, well she's cast. got attitude. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think that's part of the thing that makes the show good. They actually made Lyra, Lyra not mm-hmm. diluted for Hollywood. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Also, like, the hot air balloon guy. I oh. hate that guy. Really? <laughs> Oh, yeah. really do. The, the true American? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, it might just be the actor. Oh, you don't like Lin-Manuel Miranda? I really don't. I really don't. He annoys me. I don't know Why? what it is. What did he ever do to you? I don't know. He was in House. That's the first place I saw him. He was in House? He was in House. Yeah, he was his, like, when he was in the psych ward, he was there. Oh. And he kept, like, rapping. It was super annoying. Okay. So, I that did not know could that. be I'm just prejudiced, mm-hmm. but... That's the thing, too. With a demon, you'd think, okay, he's a pilot. He's an aeronaut. Surely his demon would be, you know, something a bit more bird-related. No, that's a rabbit. A rabbit. Mm-hmm. Like, I like mm-hmm. I like his demon, actually. Mm-hmm. His demon's better than him. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what I was like. <laughs> I'm like, I like that demon. But, no. It's one of those things. I, I want a demon. Yeah. <laughs> I have... Them. They're called cats. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. It's probably as close as you're going to yeah. get. Yeah. Or children, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> On um, special days. My child yes. follows me around and talks to me and mm-hmm. tries to tell me what to do. Yeah. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and one of those special ones. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Any thoughts or predictions for the second half? You mainly, Janine. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, obviously, I... They'll get to the north, I assume. They're already at, well. Well, they're, they're, uh, they met York, they're close. They met York, they're yeah. north adjacent. North adjacent. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And this whole dust thing, too, it's, I don't know where that's going, but. See, it's, I'm a total nerd. I'm going, ooh, particle physics. <laughs> and I'm like, it's just dust. It blows in the air. Yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta do it every weekend. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when I first heard dust, I thought, what? Yeah, yeah. I, ne- I didn't even associate it with particle physics. It was just like, oh, yeah, okay. They could have given that a better name, I think. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Like, I'm going through and I'm like, aha, that's a theoretical physicist. That's a theoretical physicist. They pick names and things like that from our world, mm-hmm. as it were. Mm-hmm. From reality. So I'm kind of going, aha, uh-huh, aha, uh-huh, aha. Uh-huh. So it's all <laughs> kind of making sense to me, but... So all yeah. these theater, these people who are like particle physics and all this should be reading this book. Yes. They'd be like, oh, <laughs> they can start underlining, not in our books, but they can start underlining the names yes. and recognize. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm too dumb to read fantasy. I don't know. Well, this one, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I've never read one that was so intricate. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, well, there's a dragon. Here he goes. Rescue, <laughs> rescue, rescue. Yeah. That's a little different than, That's true. than this. <laughs> this is a, like, there's a lot, and there's a lot of layers mm-hmm. in this mm-hmm. story. Yeah, like you said, you could you could do a thesis on this book. Yeah. Oh, completely. Mm-hmm. Like, this yeah. is like Lord of the Rings level world building. This is not Harry Potter level world building. No. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it is quite something. And also to read it in the context of it being challenged and banned and like mm-hmm. knowing that already and... I don't know. Like, it's fiction. Mm-hmm. It's it's just a story. Mm-hmm. And this person has a great imagination. Yes. To put it into a story that's readable. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. My thought always of fiction is if if the fiction is going to change or affect your faith that much, maybe your faith is not that strong mm-hmm. to begin with. I don't mm-hmm. know. But I just, like, when I was reading it, I was like, what's the fuss about with this? Mm-hmm. But maybe it, it will get different in the second half. I don't know. But... 
I, yes, it, it gets more heretical in the second okay. half, um, and in the second and third books, but not enough that I'd say it challenges your faith, unless, like you said, it's pretty shaky. Well, I guess maybe the fact, too, that they're called demons. That's I think negative some of it's the terminology. Yeah. And, I mean, anything that's anti-Catholic church. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's true. But I'm very interested to see where this goes. Mm-hmm. Put it this like, way. You're going to hate the parents. Like, hate, hate the parents. Okay, well, I don't love them already. But I will say, this is definitely not the best book I've ever read, personally. I'm finding it a little bit slow, uh, like, Mm pacing-wise. And it's okay. It's just, like, if I didn't have to finish it, I maybe wouldn't. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So I'm hoping for big things in the second half. I feel like it builds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it all... It all kind of builds to this grand conclusion at the end. Because you don't know the rest of the story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I know. That's... I can see how it'd be slow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's the thing. It, he's world building right now. Yeah. Like, he's not progressing the plot It's like setting much. up the game board. You know, yeah. a complicated game board. And then he's like, well, let's get playing already. No, we've got to read the rules now. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. really? Yeah. That's yeah, what exactly. it feels like. Yeah, mm-hmm. that is. And mm-hmm. that's exactly right. And it's like, okay, let's get yeah. a move on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I do agree with you. I think the first time I listened to it, I listened to it because I thought, well, I've already started. And then as I got farther, I was like, oh, then the, the, the light bulb started kicking in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 And I am not a person who does. I usually finish a book once I start it. It's very rare that I don't. So, I mean, probably if I didn't have to, I maybe would anyways. But it's just one of those that I'm, I would be like, hmm. Should I keep going? Because you just never know, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It starts off really slow, and then sometimes it's like, bang, in the end, and it's really good. Other times it's just like, oh. Mm-hmm. The slow claw mm-hmm. to the grave. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that being said, I do think that the show did a good job of adding the elements, building the world, yes. but without... Like, there's some episodes of some shows where it's like, did you do this just because you had to have a certain number of episodes in the season? Yeah. And like, it hasn't hit that. That's the thing, too. I read the book first, and then I watched watch half of the first season Mm -hmm. and that for me like I didn't love the show either but it helps me appreciate the book more yeah because I could visualize it better and kind of see what and then you had the alternate perspectives as well that Mm -hmm. you didn't get in the book which also helped some of those things too so that's the thing where I think watching the show along with the book does help because it does explain a lot of the magisterium and kind of the background of a lot of stuff where you don't get that in the book Mm -hmm. so it kind of helps make the book make sense so even though they don't cover exactly the same thing yeah so 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 now i have high hopes thanks (laughs) to you yes yes i think you'll like it Mm -hmm. i don't think you're gonna like the parents yeah but there's a lot more york in the second half okay Mm -hmm. that's good that's good yeah it's an armored bear yeah Yeah. i mean he the way i was very curious to see how they created him in the show Mm -hmm. what are they going to do with this character and yeah they good. did a good job of it, though. Yeah. Is he an animated character, like a like a uh, he's, pixelated character? Um, oh, what's the term? Live action. Okay. Like it's not an actual polar bear, but they did a really, really good mm-hmm. job of the animation. That mm-hmm. it's not like, oh, here we have the lion coming, and it's clearly a donkey wearing a lion costume. <laughs> 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 the first Chronicles of Narnia, Aslan was a donkey. <laughs> really? Oh, did you not? Oh my. Okay. Not not the. Uh, Disney version, the BBC version. They couldn't afford the don- lion at the time, I guess. Probably worried he'd eat the kids. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a little dangerous. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just a little bit. So, but yeah. No, I. You know, if if I don't know how many readers of science fiction how, would pick this book up. That's the thing Just too. Because it looks very mm-hmm. fantasy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, it also looks very kiddish mm-hmm. yeah. from this cover that we have here. Mm-hmm. But our mm. library copy is very well read. Mm-hmm. That's it's, true. Like, there's a hole in the dust jacket, and the spine, it's been repaired, and the spine is cracked again. Mm-hmm. So, like, I was going to check the circ numbers, and then I didn't get around to it, so. Oh, I just noticed the demons on the front. Ah, so cute. Um, yeah, but it's very, like, either that or somebody's been very hard on it. <laughs> yeah. But it looks oh, it like looks, it's, it's been, looks like it's, it's been, been well read. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, we got it in 1996. Yes. It's not so, a new book by any means. It's means. not. No. I think it came out in 95, if I'm correct. Something like that, yeah. So That's the thing. Like, this book is not new. No. The original series came out in the 90s, and there has been a movie made there of this was. before. Yeah. It was awful. Don't watch it. 
<laughs> really? And when you think that they're making really a TV good. show out of a movie, a book that's almost 20 years old, mm -hmm. of course the technology would be different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the thing, too. And I think in the second season, which I've watched, um, they do a good job of updating that and okay. keeping it current, but without going like, oh, we all have, you know, flying cars now. Yeah. Because Nope. Well, the TV show was just made, like, the first season just came out in 2020, mm -hmm. so it's not that old. Mm -hmm. The third season came out in December. Okay. I have not watched it yet. I've been waiting. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. Just wait. Just wait. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. But, no. I'm looking forward to the second half. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be interesting. Mm -hmm. I'm looking forward to comparing the show and the book in the second half. Because oftentimes you'll have it where the, the first part of a show, the first part of a book, are pretty accurate. And then somebody gets a wild hair and goes, oh, let's just add this random spaceship or something. And it's like, okay, that's not really how it goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then it just kind of goes off the rails from there. So I'm interested to see if it is actually accurate because it's been so long since I read the book that I don't remember all the specifics. Mm -hmm. So Me too. it will be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not telling. <laughs> You'll just have to read it yourself. I, well, I intend to. Good. I'm not reading it to you. <laughs> what? That's not what we're going to do at work for the next two weeks? A story time with Jess? I've explained this before, Janine. Librarians don't just get to read all day. Dang it. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I guess we'll see you in the second half after we've read the second half, watched the second half, and... Listen to the second half? Listen to the second <laughs> half. <laughs> and we're back with part two of The Golden Compass with our special guest, SCRL director, Kathy. Hello. <laughs> so, the second half of the book was it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack there, I feel like. They packed in a fair amount. They really yes. did, yeah. Um, a lot of violence. <laughs> <laughs> a wee bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> lots of bears. <laughs> lots of bears, lots more bears, yes. Yeah, definitely most of the action happens in the second half. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, what, three... Two or three different battles that go mm -hmm. on um, that kind of determine a few things and they actually find out where the kids are being taken by the gobblers and um, where Lord Azrael is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Battle of the Bears and whatnot. And the witches. And the witches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the witches towing the balloon around, which didn't happen in the show and I was very disappointed by I that. I know, I was, they didn't, they really kind of skipped over that part. Mm -hmm. When I was reading the book, I'm going, hang on, I don't remember this. I remember the balloon, and I remember Serafina Peckle showing up, but I don't remember the witches giving them a toe. They didn't, apparently. <laughs> Disappointing. But I know. I just, when I was reading that part, I was like, huh, that might be fun to just float through the air, being towed by witches, cozied up <laughs> under some furs. It's a little demeaning if you're a witch, though. Like, I'm 300 years old. I've got endless knowledge and power. Give me a toe, would you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let me tag on. <laughs> Well, true, but I don't know. I just, just seemed like nice and cozy up there. Yeah, kind of, <laughs> if you don't count for the cold. Maybe because the kids were sleeping and I was also wanting to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I must be tired today. The <laughs> keeps coming yeah. up. <laughs> no, but I did find it interesting that in the book there's a lot more information about demons. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things Lyra mentions when they were in, I forget what it's called, the place where all the kids were, that it's difficult to talk if your demon's distracted by something else. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, if you think about it, makes perfect sense, because it's a part of you, you know, mm -hmm. basically wandering mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But... So... Which makes you wonder, again, what connection the demon has to the person's soul, right? Well, that's the yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's not just demon go over there, do this. The demon mm -hmm. occasionally goes, ooh, look, squirrel. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, wanders off by themselves. But, so, like, how did, how did the demons come into being? Like, when a child is born... Lyra, when she was a little baby, there was a little demon. Oh. It was a little mouse or hamster or so something. So it comes, comes out... Because I was looking for it specifically. Comes out with the baby? Or that, how does I don't that... know. They didn't go that detail. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so when you die, your demon just... Poofs. Dies. Poofs. with you. Yeah. I'm assuming when you're born, your demon poofs. Okay. Okay. Just poofs. We've got the poofy poof. demons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Like, to me, that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like I understand the demons a little better now after the second half mm -hmm. of the book, for sure. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. The, the splitting of the demons does explain quite a bit of yeah. the yeah. demons. Yeah. yeah. And what a terrible thing. Oh. Like, that just, yeah. 
why would you do that? I'd have trouble sep- separating a regular kid from their puppy. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. even one that's like actually dependent on it mm-hmm. to function. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just some people. <laughs> <laughs> some people. <laughs> well, like by the end of the show, like you actively hate, or in the end of the book, you actively hate her parents. Yeah. Because they're just horrible. And yet, you know, there was part of it when Mrs. Coulter was trying to convince Lord Asriel to take her with him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She was truly, uh, that would have been a turning point in the, her life, I think, if he had, like, reconsidered. Yeah. Whether mm-hmm. she was just doing it, but, you know, when when um, Lyra saw her face and saw how distraught she was, maybe at that, that might have been the one redeeming moment if Lord Asriel hadn't been such a jerk. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. her parents occasionally have little flickers of humanity, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but never at the right time, never no. at the same time, nope. where nope. things can actually go like, okay, great, turning point, this can change. No, they just continue being horrible human yep. beings. Well, yeah. and they killed Roger. I think <laughs> this is very upsetting. Mm-hmm. I don't like that they killed Roger. <laughs> no, I know. I don't like that either. But I think that Lord Azrael is maybe a little bit unhinged. Also. You think? He's not quite right in the head. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's he's kind of the, the the supernova of the minds, right? So his his mind works way beyond our mm-hmm. comprehension. He's like a brilliant psychopath, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. I can explain yeah. nuclear physics to you, but excuse me, I have to pet a kitten. Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why would or I? I'll just nice cut the demon thing? away and look. Yeah. 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 Like, but like when he took off with Roger, he seemed like. Ha, 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 like, nutty. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It makes it sound like the Grinch going up the hill and <laughs> yeah. 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 the yeah. presents. Well, that's what, it, like, that's kind of how it seems, like, you know, just a little off as a rocker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. For lack of a better term. I don't... Well, so I was mean. like, okay, maybe he's not, like, you told me I was going to hate him by the end. He but killed Roger. Yes, he killed Roger. That was unfortunate. And I'm very sad about that. But also, if he's not in his right mind... Like, I feel like he's not in his right mind. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, he's definitely crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, like, so is she. Like, mm-hmm. Mrs. Coulter's also mm-hmm. insane. Oh, like, a lot of the adults in this book are a little nutty. Yeah. It's but, the Egyptians that are the normal. Like, yes. They're the, they're the everyday people. And yeah. 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 But when Roger and Lyra showed up and Lord Azrael saw that it was Lyra, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think he thought he was going to have to kill his own daughter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, like, at one point he mentions that I just ask for stuff and it shows up. Mm -hmm. And I, he apparently must have asked for a kid and Lyra shows up and Mm -hmm. panicking. Because in some portion of his human being, he does actually care for her somewhat. Yeah. 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 But just the fact that she won't call him father just tells you what a distant Mm -hmm. kind of relationship. Yeah. She did call Miss Coulter mother for, like, all of three seconds. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I... The other thing I felt when I was reading was Lyra is at times so naive and at other times she's so cunning and clever and smart and I just had a hard time with like sometimes she just seems so dumb like she didn't know and it wasn't her fault that she didn't know but she just I think the way she was raised wasn't aware of what was happening mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. but isn't that a fairly accurate depiction of childhood yeah maybe yeah because you got the kids it was like I know how to smuggle a penguin home from the zoo and then the ones where it's like the sky's blue, oh, I hadn't noticed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, mm-hmm. but that's same and that kid. could be the same kid on the same day. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, they, I know <laughs> they go from brilliant little like, how on earth did you come up with that mm-hmm. to like, seriously, fork, food. <laughs> Have we got this mastered? <laughs> <laughs> it just I don't know. Sometimes I was like, oh, she's so dumb. And the other times I was like, wow, she's really clever. Like with the bear. Yes, mm-hmm. y- Yofer. I don't know if I'm Yofer, saying that yeah. right, but. Uh, the way she convinced him that she was a demon, yeah, for bears. Yeah, I was like, that's yeah, yeah. Like, that's her sneakiness coming yeah. in. Yeah, she's yeah. so clever. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing. Like the bears were really interesting to me. Yeah, yeah. Because the way they described the bears in the book was quite different from the way that they were portrayed in the show. Yeah. Like, in the book, it was described as, like, the the palace that Yofer built was, like, covered in bird crap and, like, birds everywhere. Well, who was going to clean it? They're bears, right? You know, seal skins here. and Mm -hmm. It was gross. Yofer himself has, like, gold foil on his nails, and he had, like, this doll mannequin thing and, you know, just really quite um, 
I don't want to call him a character. He's a character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He wanted to be human. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. he and tried everything he possibly could to be human, and it, it obviously didn't work because he's a bear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> shocking. But when we got to watching the show, I was looking, like, please tell me there's this doll here somewhere. Because he wants a demon so bad. Mm -hmm. Surely they put that in the show because that is how Lyra convinces him that she's, you know, his demon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they don't really have any evidence of that. And they depict the bears as a lot more uh, noble and like, yeah, sure, Yofer's, you know, taken over and that kind of thing, but they're not living in the, the squalor and filth. Mm -hmm. And they're not as confused. Yeah, in mm -hmm. the book they right. were very confused, and a lot of them also got dolls because yeah. they thought that's mm -hmm. what they should do. Mm -hmm. And he, Which is, you know, when you look at uh, any... We're going a little political, but when you look at any, they follow what the what the the, mm -hmm. the leader's doing, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, you know, we've got purple hair today, so let's all have purple. Yeah. yeah. Well, they they follow whoever's in charge in order to mm -hmm. try and curry favor for mm -hmm. their own personal mm -hmm. gain. Mm -hmm. And exactly. Lyra was able to really take advantage of that in the book because she essentially went, well, I have to tell you for something, and it's only right he'd be the first to know. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you have to take it to him. And they didn't know any better because mm -hmm. Yofer's essentially upending their entire yep. hierarchy yeah. and yeah. political and systems. Because they were normal systems. bears. Exactly. Before. Yeah. Like, and he's just... Because as soon as the battle ended, what was the first thing that um, York made them do? Take the castle down. You bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I told them to stop because there's uh, people in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but how quickly they all switched allegiances mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. right? Like, mm -hmm. it was just... Like that, okay, this guy's our leader now. He won the battle, so yep. Yep. now we're following him. Yep. And if the monkey man came in next, we'd be swinging from the trees if there were any in the <laughs> pool. In the pool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like they, they switched pretty quick there. Yeah. But, I mean, it's pretty good depiction of uh, most dictatorships. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yep. Non-democratic places. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. That being said, I was quite glad that the Bear's Palace wasn't as disgusting as it was in the books. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So even just reading it, I was like, oh, I can smell this place. Yes. <laughs> also, as happy as I am that York won the battle, I did not need to read all those details of the battle. No. The battle was, was a lot little... cleaner in the show. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a little gory for yeah. my taste, yeah. personally. And this is why this is such a confusing book, because it really, you really think, well, you know, kids could read it, and then you get to something like that, and ooh, mm -hmm. no, I don't think so, you know? Yeah. You can't, it's one of those things where, yeah, like you say, you can't get the picture out of your head. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are parts of this that would be fine for a kid to read, but there are a lot of heavy themes in oh, the yeah. book as oh, well. Yeah. Yeah. Like even at the end when they find Lord Asriel and he's like opening up the what is it, an alternate dimension or something like that. And like the dust and how it relates to when you hit puberty and the church, how the church mm -hmm. doesn't they don't want the dust. Is that am I remembering that right? Yeah, right. the church thinks the dust is the original sin. Right. 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 And like like that's some heavy stuff for a kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some kids would, some kids would see it for what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, and we, you know, being grown up in our imaginations, won't let us let go of you know what the association. Yeah, it mm -hmm. would be if kids could get past the the gruesomeness of some of it, mm -hmm. they would mm -hmm. just take it for what it is, right? Yeah. That's the thing. Like it's it's gone some pretty heavy political themes. Yeah. And we notice that because we're adults <laughs> yeah yep but it's like anything it's like watching a disney movie and you go oh that's an adult joke <laughs> yeah and the kids go oh no it's fine you know and that's yeah. true skip right over it they don't even notice it yeah but yeah. the oh. part of this book is the kids are being taken away from their families and then they're being essentially abused right like mm -hmm. they're cutting away their demons and mm -hmm. like cutting away a part of themselves and mm -hmm. like it's it's awful yep yeah yep yeah and so yeah I think at one point they described it as being turned into a zombie where you have no yeah. individual thought. You'll yes. just do whatever you're the, told. The guys that drilled the holes in their brains. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe I just want to protect my kids. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. it's difficult to fathom mm -hmm. why somebody want to do that to a kid. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. why would you not want your kid to be happy and cheerful with the, you know, happy yeah. little ferret? Like, to me, that just makes sense. But yeah. if you think in your mind that it is the original sin and that you are protecting them because that's like lord asriel has his own agenda mm -hmm. but mrs coulter like her her big thing seems to be that she honestly thinks that she is protecting these kids because now they won't have dust right. they don't have dust they're they don't have the original sin if they don't have the original sin then they're saved 
and thus the ends justify the means irregardless of the fact that you are ruining their life mm -hmm. and that you don't know enough about dust to actually say any no, of that no yeah. no like no and when you think of you know everything down through history and all the things that were done in the name of saving somebody from yeah uh, horrible things have happened yeah mm -hmm. yeah yeah like, it's the ignorance and determination is winning out over common sense and actually just opening your eyes and seeing that hey maybe that is not actually what is good for these kids mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. well i think we're talking about roger dying but i think right at the end um i was just looking to the last page here and i remember because i listened to the story i remember lyra and um pan talking about roger and how they got it wrong. They thought they were saving Roger from mm -hmm. Lord Ad Adzrael, and they realized that Roger kind of led them to the portal um, where they could actually discover what's really going mm -hmm. on. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Roger technically is a sacrificial lamb, I guess, if you really Pretty wanted much. to get into it. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's yes. basically what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I mean, at the end, too, Lyra goes, well, if all of these adults are doing this because they think dust is bad and they're hurting people and you know they're causing all this chaos and mayhem dust must be good <laughs> yep because yeah, exactly. all these evil people are telling us that it's bad yep. so yeah. the yep. opposite must be true if they're fighting this hard yep. to yeah yeah keep control of it i know you asked me just this morning what i thought of this book <laughs> i said i finished the book and i wrote in my notes no <laughs> because it ended on a cliffhanger mm -hmm. and now i feel like i need to read the rest of the series mm -hmm. i don't want to do that <laughs> <laughs> i enjoyed the book i didn't love it mm -hmm. enough that mm -hmm. if it hadn't have ended on a cliffhanger it would be like that's fine i read well, it good. now yep yep so now i i don't know <laughs> i'm torn so it is one where i feel like you could read it 15 times mm -hmm. and still come up with something different every single oh, time. I'm oh, sure yeah, this book could. is way and different than it now. The second time I've listened yeah. to it, way yeah. different. Like, yeah. First time I had to get over the anxiety like you. Mm -hmm. I was so anxious about it all the way through. And yeah. then got to the end, I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Relief. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Relief, but also <laughs> not because <laughs> what's next? Mm -hmm. I don't have time to read these books. We so need many. to stop doing series. I know, <laughs> yeah. we really do. <laughs> But, but yeah, there's just so much yeah. in there. I don't, the way this man's mind works is mm -hmm. a little bit mind boggling to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's the thing. Like it's, you still got two more books to go in the series. And the first book is very much a setup. Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of information packed into it. It's mm -hmm. relatively dense. Just you're building an entire world, an entire theological system, essentially for a YA book that's sometimes a little bit heavy um but then you've also got the next two books to actually start explaining and resolving some things so mm -hmm. yeah the next books might be easier for you to get through because it's a little less of the there's not as many battles and, and yeah yeah it's, it's a bit more uh just now that we've got the basics down now we can figure things out mm -hmm. so. and of course okay. in the next book she does a lot of, like she says, they uh, they looked towards the sun and walked into the sky, and it was her and Pan by themselves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. that's that was the other thing. I miss the Egyptians. <laughs> yeah, I like them. They're I great. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. And like the second half of the book, they're almost hardly there at all. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, oh. Yeah, that's I the miss. thing. They stuck around a lot longer in the show than they did in the book. Yeah. In the book, they're like, yeah, the first little bit of the second half, but that's pretty yeah. much it. They got her to where they needed. She needed to be. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was their mission, technically. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and they yeah. just kind of left because, mm -hmm. well, in a bear fight, they're not much good. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> there's not really any point there. There's no, <laughs> there's no room for humans in a bear fight. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> you want to do some fun facts, Janine? Sure. So, Philip Pullman was named the 11th most influential person in British culture in a 2004 BBC poll, and he is also a self-proclaimed atheist, which I'm I not surprised. think is pretty obvious <laughs> when you read this mm -hmm. book. Mm -hmm. um, in 2002, conservative UK journalist Peter Hitchens published an article about Pullman titled, This is the Most Dangerous Author in Britain, saying he is the anti-C.S. Lewis, the one atheists would have been praying for if atheists prayed. Which I thought was like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's a little harsh. Is it true? Possibly. The thing is, you but could compare it a little bit to 
um, the Chronicles of Narnia in a lot of the mm -hmm. same ways. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. so, except that one is, of course, considered religious, whereas mm -hmm. this one is not. But, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I think we said in the first half we chose this book because it's Freedom to Read Week in yes. Canada. And this book has been challenged, I think, more than once. It's been multiple times, for so. sure. Um, so Pullman once told a magazine, I wouldn't want to be part of any movement that had an agenda. I'm not arguing a case. I'm not preaching a sermon. I'm not giving a lecture. I'm telling a story. Any position I take is that of a storyteller who says, once upon a time, this happened. Which I thought, you know, it's, it's fiction. Mm -hmm. It is a story, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So. It's as scandalous as you make it. Yeah. You like, can take it as a fiction book and that's all you get from it or you can yeah. you know read whatever you want into it's, it huh? it's not the gospel no well the gospel according to philip pullman maybe i <laughs> yeah. don't know yeah but uh, yeah. yeah i just i thought that was really interesting because it is it's fiction mm -hmm. like yeah. mm -hmm. if we can't separate fact from fiction we need yeah. help <laughs> yeah yeah i don't know like i remember when the Da Vinci Code came out years, years and years ago, yeah, and so. everybody was like, all the Christians were so open arms about it, and I was like, it's just a novel. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. don't read it, or <laughs> yeah. read it knowing in your mind that it's not true. Somebody made this up. Yeah. yeah it and was, might, based on true facts, like there is a city of Rome, and there, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but this came out of somebody's imagination. Mm -hmm. They're not trying to rewrite the Bible. No. No. And that's the thing. If you're saying Jesus is real, he's a historical character. If you're writing a historical book about the time and you want it to be fiction mm -hmm. he's a character mm -hmm. like any other mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. yeah he is what you make him so yeah so i just thought that was an interesting mm -hmm. comment mm -hmm. but that's why books are so dangerous because mm -hmm. everybody sees what they want to see mm -hmm. yep that's true yep. it's all in the interpretation yep. right exactly because like we said back way back in the first one the cover does not give you any indication of what you're going to see inside of this mm -hmm. book because it's a girl riding a polar bear. So yep. you think, oh, isn't that cute? Yes. <laughs> this looks like a nice, nice Arctic Arctic story. story. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not quite. No. <laughs> not at all. But yeah. now we all have to go read parts two and three. I'll put that on my list. <laughs> yeah, I don't have time. <laughs> Download on an audiobook, then you can listen to it. That's well, you, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then you can multitask. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I'm just going to have to start doing that with more books. Yeah. Especially ones that, especially ones you're finding difficult reading. Mm -hmm. Listening makes a huge difference. That's true. It does. I did download recently my first audiobook that I downloaded and put on the Libby app. First time I'm using Libby app. Um, the Dutch House by Anne Patchett, which is narrated by Tom Hanks, which oh. was the appeal for me mm -hmm. uh, because... His voice is very soothing. Mm -hmm. um, and I was, I was listening, and I was like, okay, I can keep listening, but if I was actually reading this book, I may have given up already. I'm on chapter two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there well, is I can that. make a few recommendations that you will love. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. Like I've got a list of about ten off the top of my head if you want to. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah, me too. They're just a bing, bing, bing. Yep. <laughs> Narrator definitely makes a difference, mm -hmm. though. That's yeah. oh, for sure. Makes yeah. all the Because the first one I tried on Play Away was awful yeah and so, don't let that don't let that dis <laughs> discourage you so when i saw this i was like okay i'm gonna i'm gonna try this because mm -hmm. tom mm -hmm. hanks mm -hmm. and then my husband came in the room and he was like what is that voice <laughs> and then he thought i was a man from our church and i was like <laughs> nope and he's like oh it's tom hanks and I was like, yes <laughs> tom's in my room here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah i mean it's one of those books where yeah read it it's good Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Watch the show; it's also good. Yes, listen to the audiobook; it's also good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, now we have to all go read the next one. Yeah, I'll go. Just, I'll go lo download it right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any final thoughts, Janine? Um, no. Other know. than darn it, not to get the next yes. one. Yes, no. no. <laughs> well, and I just want to thank you guys for inviting me to to be part of this because I forgot how much I enjoyed this book. Yeah. So it was good to review it again yes mm -hmm. thank you for joining us mm -hmm. it was great i will have to start watching the series television series mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. season three comes out on dvd in february okay. it's on my request list we have one and two <laughs> okay well, at least with this show it's fairly accurate to the book like they add a lot of things in the second half well yeah maybe well there's the a whole half. other storyline going on yeah that i'm assuming you're very confused i was a by. little confused i'm like who is this boy and what is he like no mm -hmm. Yeah, they start kind of a little bit earlier. But is adding that, other people? Sense. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that come from the second and third books on mm -hmm. that boy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
You get more of a story in the second season, but there's like nothing about him in the first book. Mm, no. And then he shows up. I forget his name. Will. Will, right. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so he starts like second half of the TV show. He actually mm. gets introduced. So he kind of starts building his story a little bit, which. And then he, yeah, he kind of comes out of the And Lyra walks through a doorway, archway. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, are they going to the same place? Are they going to meet? I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you have to tell me so that I don't have to read or nope. watch. <laughs> oh, no spoilers yeah. here? No, nope, no spoilers, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's okay. it for today. All right. Thank you. Reminder that all of the content here is our personal opinions. Except for the facts. The facts are facts. The facts are facts. True. But uh, these are opinions. If you disagree, that's fantastic. It's your prerogative. Tell us what you think in the comments. Yes, let us know. So that's our show for this week. Thank you all for listening. And thank you to our editor, Linda. And we'll see you next time. 